Welcome back to the Kennedy Dynasty Podcast. I'm your host, Allison, and I hope you are having a wonderful week. After a very, very, very long amount of time of the podcast, I'm finally going to talk about Frank Sinatra today, which I know is something that a lot of people want to hear about is his relationship with JFK. So before I get to that, let's start with our In the News segment. Big news story of the past seven days. So I talked about this on my Instagram account. If you don't follow me, follow at Kennedy Dynasty. You will get news right when it happens on the account there instead of waiting a few days to hear it on the podcast. But um, Sirhan Sirhan, who is the man who assassinated Bobby Kennedy, was denied for parole for the 16th time. This news comes two years after a review board recommended that he be released because he no longer posed a danger to the public. You can read about this literally on every news outlet possible. So go check it out. Now for our inspiring clip of the week. One of the inspiring notes. This is Ted Kennedy at the 2004 Democratic Convention. Today, in this global age, our goal of the common good extends far beyond America's borders. As President Kennedy said in 1963, in his quest for restraint in nuclear arms, we can help make the world safe for diversity. For in the final analysis, our most basic common link is that we all inhabit this small planet. We all breathe the same air. We all cherish our children's future. And we are all mortal. Interdependence defines our world. For all our might and for all our wealth, we know we are only as strong as the bonds we share with others. The dangers of terrorism and nuclear proliferation are greatest challenges are shared by all nations. And our greatest opportunities from achieving lasting peace and security to building a more prosperous society to ending the ravages of disease and the despairs of poverty can all be seized, but only if the world works together and only if America helps to lead in the right direction. Now for my recommendation segment course, then we would uh, recommend it. Today, I'm going to recommend a book called Sinatra and the Jack Pack by Michael Sheridan. I will put a link in the description of this episode. Okay, let's get to the episode. My sources today are History, Inside Hook, Variety, Business Insider, Irish Central, Biography, Time, and that's it. Okay, so when and how Kennedy and Sinatra first met is actually unknown. But the pair were connected through the marriage of Pat Kennedy to Peter Lawford, who was a member of the Rat Pack. Now, I need to do a whole episode diving into the Rat Pack, but for now, I'll just tell you, this is a group of entertainers, and they were Peter Lawford, Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean Martin, and Joey Bishop. So Kennedy's friendship with Sinatra was politically convenient because Sinatra was a highly influential, top-selling recording artist and an A-list movie star. He was well-placed to secure the support of both fans and other American performers and to enhance Kennedy's image as a political celebrity. Frank Sinatra and the Rat Pack were amongst the most active supporters of the Kennedy campaign. In fact, they even temporarily rebranded themselves to become the Jack Pack at the Democratic National Convention, where Kennedy accepted the party's nomination for the presidential candidacy. Sinatra also organized donor dinners, appeared in radio ads, and adjusted the lyrics to his 1959 hit High Hopes, which would become the theme tune to the campaign and years later, the intro to this podcast. Everyone is voting for Jack Cause he's got what all the rest lack Everyone wants to back Jack Jack is on the right track Cause he's got I hopes he's got I hopes 1960's the year for his I hopes I also have a shirt that I really love with like the record the high hopes record on the front and my merch shop so I'm gonna link that in the description of this episode too go check it out I have the one that's like it's kind of cool like tie-dye-ish, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favorite shirts. So Frank Sinatra was instrumental in securing union votes for Kennedy during the 1960 presidential campaign. 
Allegedly, he persuaded organized crime boss Sam Giancana to support JFK and commit voter fraud on the future president's behalf, and he performed at Giancana's club in Chicago for eight days by way of thanking him. He also introduced JFK to Judith Campbell Exner, which was Sam Giancana's girlfriend and the woman who acted as a go-between for Giancana and the Kennedy administration in their plot for the mob to assassinate Fidel Castro as part of Operation Mongoose, which if you've listened to this podcast long enough, you have heard Pryor and I talk about Operation Mongoose quite a bit. So we've covered that base. Frank Sinatra even performed at JFK's inaugural gala, and during the gala, JFK made it clear that he was indebted to Sinatra for his campaign efforts. I'm going to play a clip of that here. I know we're all indebted to a great friend, Frank Sinatra. Long before he could sing, he used to poll a Democratic precinct back in New Jersey. That precinct has grown to cover a country. But long after he has ceased to sing, he's going to be standing up and speaking for the Democratic Party, and I thank him on behalf of all of you tonight. You cannot imagine the work that he has done to make this show a success. Tonight, there are two shows on Broadway that are closed down because the members of the cast are here. And I want he and my sister Pat's husband, Peter Lawford, to know that we're all indebted to them, and we're proud to have them with us. And it's also said that during the presidential campaign, Sinatra introduced Kennedy to Marilyn Monroe, with whom he would infamously go on to have an affair. Kennedy even stayed at Frank Sinatra's home, and the entertainer had a sign which read, JFK slept here in the bedroom. However... The president canceled his plans to stay at Sinatra's home during a trip to California in 1962. I remember talking about this in one of the first episodes that we ever had of this podcast, and this is so fascinating to me. But President Kennedy actually instead stayed with Bing Crosby, despite the fact that Sinatra had spent so much money on the installation of a helipad for Marine One. And this fractured the relationship between the two of them and led to the demise of the Rat Pack, as it was Peter Lawford who had to break the news to Sinatra. Because remember, Peter Lawford is JFK's brother-in-law, and he's obviously intertwined in the family and the administration. So anyway, this story always makes me think, like, because he got so furious. I mean, I guess I would be furious, too, if I had spent all this money for somebody to come, and then they just, like, canceled on me last minute. But it seems like Frank Sinatra was pretty obsessed with his friendship with JFK, especially if you have a sign on your door that says, JFK slept here. Just, Just a thought. But Sinatra's relationship with the Kennedys eventually broke down, and there are a number of theories as to why that was the case. Firstly, it was reported that a wiretapped conversation between Sam Giancana and Sinatra revealed that he was pursuing an affair with Patricia Kennedy Lockford in order to secure influence over President Kennedy. Yikes. Big yikes. Also, Jackie Kennedy apparently despised Sinatra and wanted him nowhere near the White House. And we cannot have this episode without mentioning that Sinatra was also linked to the mob. And on the advice of Bobby Kennedy, in his role as attorney general, JFK cut him off in order to preserve his own reputation and prevent himself from being politically tainted. So they weren't friends anymore at that point. But regardless of the fact that Sinatra and Kennedy were no longer on speaking terms by 1963, he was, according to his daughter Nancy, absolutely devastated by the assassination. And he apparently cried for days. So that's all I've got about Frank Sinatra and JFK's relationship. Obviously, there's a lot more we can dive into and probably will in the future. But because of my format, that is what I've got for you today. Make sure you go do your own research. I'm learning alongside you. So send me anything interesting that you find. Um, You can email me or DM me and I would love to learn more with you about this topic. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss when an episode is available. I've got some really great ones coming up, some awesome author interviews. Some, we've got we've just got a good lineup coming up, so I don't want you to miss it. So subscribe. Please rate the podcast to five stars. And if you would like, write a positive written review. That would be so kind. I'd really appreciate it. Positive reviews help the podcast so much. And um, there's a lot of work that goes into this podcast. There really is. So a review is not only a little pat on the back, but it helps the show be able to be seen by others. And it's, it's very helpful. So please take a moment and do that if you haven't already. Check out those links in the description that I talked about. I'll put the recommendation book and I'll put the High Hopes t-shirt. I really think you guys will like that. And that's all I've got. And I will talk to you next week. Come on and vote for Kennedy. Vote for Kennedy. Keep America strong. Kennedy, he just keeps rolling up. Kennedy, he just keeps rolling up. Kennedy, he just keeps rolling up.